I was going to pretend uh, maybe it's like the 80s or the 90s when the video starts and someone's just like they're crocheting oh hello I didn't see you there welcome but I couldn't figure out a way to like introduce it without doing just that so there you go that's my funniness for today I'm going to turn my computer on here because otherwise when you comment I miss them right oh it's a very bouncy video today uh, it's on my list someday I'll have a different um, setup thing this is a ring light it's a selfie light I don't think you're supposed to put it on a wobbly desk and it's not great for overhead when I'm looking on the desk it kind of bounces and wobbles someday we'll change it how do I get to view the your channel there we go so today this morning no yesterday yesterday dad mentioned hey I'm taking the kids dart class tomorrow and I was like yes I'll do a video so I quickly posted in my Facebook group and that's where I'm most active if you want to like contact me and chill with me or whatever and I said hey what do you want to see because I have like a million things I want to show you guys and a million patterns that I want to do and I feel like eventually maybe I'll get through the list but I might as well do the things that you guys want to see first so that is why I asked in there and we had a few people comment some people are hoping for the interlocking crochet the center out using my heart levels 40 if I finish this and there's still lots of time I'll just keep going or something like that but I think that it does sound very interesting for me to show you what I do now if you're familiar with interlocking crochet you'll probably understand some of the words a little better if you're not familiar at all uh, I don't know some of it might get a little confusing but I'll still do my best to make it understandable I have a lot of tabs open there I think I need them all I'm not gonna close them I'm also way too hot in this sweater I just wanted to show it off look it's got no sleeves because why I ran out of yarn <laughs> but I think it's fun and it's bulky yarn so it's definitely way too warm for the summer but it has no sleeves so are you gonna wear it in the winter probably not I don't know what it's for it's really an art piece We'll pretend that it's for art and not for wearing and it does seem weird I don't have like crochet hooks and yarn this time got a pen and a paper if you want to draw with me I, I was thinking I might try using basic graph paper today just to show you how I do things but I will let you in on uh, it's not much of a secret it's been posted sorry I just moved my camera back <laughs> It's been posted everywhere. There goes my yarn. Uh, we'll just put that aside. Uh, this is very organized chaos behind me. It's Dad's da dresser, so we've got um, blowing your nose tissue, a belt, and then it's yarn and it's project bags that I emptied. And if you look behind me that way, it's just kids' toys. Everything is here. It's all good. My fa. Is my phone working because my computer won't load it and I don't know if it's my computer or if that means my stream on my phone isn't working but it does say that there's already a thumbs up and seven people watching oh there now my computer's going oh you saw the back of my head at some point I don't know what's going on anyway so uh, yes the secret when I started designing I used graph paper now this is like branded graph paper it says 1855 the paper probably isn't that old but it's pretty close to it this is just scrap paper that we have we have graph paper all over the place but this is just one that was handy all of the interlocking charts and overlay mosaic charts that that's what I do I don't know if you're new here if you're new here that's what I do I do interlocking crochet and that's like this it's um, two layers of mesh so there's like pockets or my charts can be used for mosaic crochet mm, which sample is better to show this is mosaic crochet the back is just stripes and um, it's still just two colors so the charts can be used for both techniques when I started designing I only did interlocking crochet and then some people quite a few people were like you know you can do mosaic crochet with your charts and I was like okay fine I'll learn <laughs> and so some of my charts um, I've just given the written instructions using that same chart and some of them I've edited a little bit to remove the mesh dots but you can still see that it's the same pattern really so when I started this is what I had 
paper and pen. I know you guys absolutely blows your mind when people suggest that they use paper and pen because some people seem to think that it's magic. We create the designs. We, we have some special program and magic words and it creates the designs for us and I want to be a designer too, so tell me your secrets. Sometimes some of you, maybe not you watching, some people out there are a little bit rude about asking this question. There's no secret. There's no magic trick. I'm going to tell you what I do. Maybe you can do it too and we'll have new designers in our midst. That's okay. Maybe you'll say, oh, that is difficult. I'm going to buy a pattern. That's even better for me, really. <laughs> Maybe you just want to make your own patterns. I don't care. This is what I do. It's not meant to be like, here's how you start your business. But maybe it is going to be the kickstart. I don't know. When I learned how to use the chart, the next step for me was using Stitch Fiddle. It's like a website slash online app. I don't know what they call it. I think it's stitchfiddle.com. Other designers I've seen them mention they still use Stitch Fiddle. It works. It's basically gra like a grid, like this graph paper, online. Other options is Excel, Microsoft Excel. It's a grid, it's a graph paper on the computer. I use WinStitch. It's not a secret, I've said it many times. Technically, it is a, what's that word when you have a canvas and you put tiny little sewing needle, needle point, something like that, cross stitch. It's a cross stitch program, but it makes a grid and it has pretty colors and it has a few extra tools that allow you to like select certain spaces or cut and paste. That's what's easier. On here, if I'm using a pen, obviously cut and paste, I have to use the actual scissors. So that's why I do prefer the computer. And WinStitch, I don't know how many years ago, somebody worked with them and convinced them to add a button. You can export once you've drawn there goes my pen. <laughs> you can draw your design and then you can export, export? Is that the word? Export the written instructions. Now, WinStitch written instructions, they'll give you the counts. Um, this isn't a good chart to show you. Let's try this one. Well, it has X's on it. Ignore the X's if you're doing interlocking. X's are for mosaic crochet. So you can see interlocking has these little dots all over the place, which means you're not actually reading those when you're counting your stitches. And this program, when it gives you the line counts, ignores those dots. So it gives you the stitch counts and I don't have to be the one making a mistake. That's why the program is helpful. If you don't know how to draw, um, well, if you don't know how to draw in general, but if you don't know how to draw an interlocking chart, that program may not work the way you expect it to. It's not doing all the work for you. It's just a tool, okay? And it technically doesn't do mosaic crochet. So what I do is save the file like three different times and cut this and cut that and paste them together and blah, blah, blah. So it's not magic. That's the point of my whole video. That's my big takeaway. It's not magic. You're gonna have to put some work into it if you wanna create something. The other issue, even though I use WinStitch and I get the line instructions, the instructions that they give are not um, very readable. It gives you the count, but it's not very concise. It's difficult to read. So then I copy and paste it to a Word document. I'm not kidding. I have 900 plus pages of macros that then I click the buttons. I've created these macros and it takes that written instructions and changes it to be what my patterns look like. More readable, more legible. So... All of that to say, I do put work into my patterns and I think that you can probably learn how to do it too. I'm going to show you the process of drawing on the chart today. We'll start with interlocking crochet because that's how I started designing. And then I'll point out how you can change that to be mosaic. So I'm gonna move my camera because I want you to see the desk. And it's going to be just one second. There's my mess, that's my cat squares. So I'm actually putting this down, but then I also am going to switch this. Connecting. Sorry about that. I pushed something weird as I was trying to move it. So hopefully we're still connected. I want you to see down here. Now my little stand is going to hold as well. Oops, I did get a little blur on there. Here, I'm going to clean that. Woo! Ta-da! Do you like my new dress? 
I don't buy myself clothes very often, but I bought a new dress and now I feel pretty. And I did my hair for you guys. Did you notice? <laughs> I don't really do my hair very often either. But I thought, hey, I'm going to be on video. I'm going to do my hair. But it is too warm for me. So I'm just quickly putting a ponytail in and then I'm going to sit down again. I know you can't see anything happening. I'm sorry. You could talk to me. Text. No, not text. Was it typing? Just comments. Whatever. You can talk to me. You can say stuff if you want. If you don't want to. That's fine too. I am good at the talking. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed. So here is uh, my tips, my tricks. I'm not sure what the words are. Um, am I in the camera? Yes. So here is the basics of how I design. When you have interlocking crochet, oh, do I have a small sample? Well, this one's not too small. Let's look at this one. First, you have to know what you're designing. It helps to know that this is two layers of mesh, white layer and a purple layer. The purple layer is outside the white layer. This is the outer edge of white. This is the outer edge of purple. When you're looking at the chart, see my pre-dotted chart, the outside edge is all purple. And then the next row is pink dots. The white is counting as nothing in this particular picture. But these pink dots, that's counting as my inner row. It's one window smaller. And when you're reading the chart, these blue dots and this pink dots, what I have put on here, I start with a chart like this. On my computer program, I have it saved so that I always start with the dots. That's how I design everything. It helps when you're doing it on paper. Obviously, you can't do that, right? So you'd have to photocopy something. The computer, I just open this every time. I can change the size and then I copy and paste the dots. Because when you're reading the chart, every other dot, you don't read it at all. You, you skip it. That's the dots. When you're looking at here, you're going double crochet, chain, and this square that was on the chart doesn't get read. And when you're looking at the other side, it's just the opposite. So that's why I start with these dots. And then to create my pattern using my dots, I know that if I'm using, for example, the blue dots and my black pen, there's two colors. I'm going to use this one as black and pink. White means I haven't put anything in that square. It needs to be decided. If it doesn't get decided, my default is white. Because then when I finish, I erase the pink or I just change them to white. So really, I'm pretending like I do this on the computer usually. My black, my blue dots. And I get to decide all of these white dots. Are they going to be white or black? I get to decide. And that's how the chart gets drawn. Anything that's pink is already decided. You can't change it. If you're doing interlocking crochet, that's a window hole and you can't change it. You can see uh, here, this is a white dot. This would be a pink dot on here. You cannot change that pink dot. And this is the pink dot. It's the same thing. It's, it's where the double crochet meets into it. This double crochet is meeting into it. All you can change is here. This chain space, is it going to be visible or is it going to be covered? Like this one's covering the white. This one's visible. This is what you get to decide when you're making your patterns. Oh, yeah, the camera's too far. Ooh, okay, which part did you want to see? Oh, this one? My camera's still dirty. Oh, darn, I shouldn't have touched it. Um, or maybe it's my screen. Uh, okay, let's bring this one closer. These blue dots and pink dots is what I'm talking about. Those are the holes. You don't get to decide. Only on here, only white, that means that I get to decide is it going to be pink or blue. And for me on here, that would be purple or white, which I know there's two whites and that gets a little confusing. But what I'm telling you is that pink and blue has been decided already on the chart if you're doing interlocking crochet, locked fillet mesh, whatever you want to call it. And on when you're looking at a finished piece, that is the dots that you can see here. Between my double crochet chain, double crochet, there is a little hole. That is right here. That's blue on the chart. Purple here. That's the square. You don't get to count it when you're getting a written pattern. It's always going to be there. And that corresponds to this sort of, you can think of the chart as right here where it's joining. That's one square. Right here the double crochet is another square. 
right here where it's joining that's another square right here where there's chain one that's another square so all of these are squares this would be one two three four squares on the chart right there and the pink you can see here that's a pink dot and right here that's a blue dot it's already decided it's out of focus still um let me see what i can do let me wipe the camera again The chart is very small and my camera doesn't have good zoom features on the inner. It doesn't look out of focus on my screen here, so that's why I'm not sure. And oh, you know what? It's possible that my, uh, well, I was trying to watch the comments on my computer but I think my computer is very delayed because now I'm just seeing it's changing. So that's actually not going to help me. Let's turn that off. And I'll just try to pay attention here more. Maybe I'm delayed. Is there anything that so far is confusing or do I need to repeat some more? Otherwise, like it looks fine on here, but I think I might have been seeing the comments very delayed. So point of my story is when I'm starting with an interlocking crochet chart I start with all these dots one color and two colors one color blue another color pink white means it hasn't been decided I get to choose what goes in those white squares is it going to be and that corresponds to how the locked mesh looks when you create it and I know that's not exactly mosaic crochet we'll get to that in just a second on here, if you were taking your pen, you could then say, well, first of all, we know that the outer edge is always because of the windows. The outer edge is always going to be blue. So when I do my charts, the first thing I do is get my outer line blue. Because I know that pink isn't going to be on the outer edge. It simply can't. When I'm doing it on the computer, it does save me time because... It has a magic tool and I just create a line and it goes pop and it fills in the whole square, right? So the computer program saves me time, but the concept is the same as here with the papers. I'm going to see if I open up a new screen, if it'll put me at the live video that we're currently at so that I don't have such a delay. The next one is going to be pink, but pink doesn't show up very well. So I wasn't sure if I could use a different colored pen and that you guys would understand that pink is now purple. Is that, is that going to be acceptable? Your channel is eligible. Not now, I'm busy. How do I get there? Your channel, yes please. Live, clickety click. Oh, see now it's giving me a commercial, that's why. Um, but I do see more comments change your resolution i cannot i don't have that option when i'm using my phone for a live video on the youtube so i could bring that box we've been doing it for crocheting and i wasn't sure if it was going to help but i think we will try the box because it brings it up i can't make my camera go any lower and that's very very close now my hand won't fit in there we'll just pop it up just a little okay so, oops, where's my pen? There we go. So, you can have a, a blank chart. I like to start with the dots, but I will get to the blank chart in a second. So, I have black and purple. Maybe you can see it. Oh, the person watching can change things. Is my... Oh, it's cutting out, hey? Hmm. Well, I'm going to keep going. Hopefully, YouTube will fix itself. It's not crazy windy outside today. There's no storm, so I don't know. My internet should all be working. So I thought live would work, but we'll see. So because we're doing interlocking mesh to, to start with, the outer layer, the first layer, is one window bigger than the second one. And this second line on all my patterns, I use the same. I do a straight line on the bottom. Oops, we're too far I do a straight line on the bottom and I lock it in with one stitch 
and then a straight line on the sides. But there are other options. So you could have um, like a dash where it would be, oh, so is this pen going to work? Oh yeah, there we go. You can choose that color it in and then this one you could make black if you wanted to. And I think there are designers that do um, an alternating dash all the way around. You could choose to not lock it in here like I've done this. I just thought that it gets a bit flappy when I have it white straight. So I just locked it in. But you could choose to go all of these pink or purple, whatever color we're going to pretend it is. My preferred method to lock everything in is to basically make a straight line across the top and a straight line across the bottom. And then I join it on the sides. Very messy looking fill-ins, but I hope you understand the concept of what we're doing here. Which means that on this, I always fill that in. So the there are other options, but that's how I think all of my patterns do. There might be one. Oh, the pen's going to die. Ha! <laughs> the pen died. Okay, pen. Thanks a lot for your non-existent help. I don't know if I have other. I didn't prepare enough because I only was bringing one. Uh, oh, well, look at that. Guess what some of my favorite colors are? In my little... This is how I... Side note. <laughs> This is how I have all my hooks, scissors, <laughs> stitch markers are along the side. And in here I've got a bunch of pens. I have two purples. So the one that just died is set aside and I have two more purple. So guess what color I like. <laughs> uh, what is going on here? My chat is now disappeared. Oh, there we go. Oh, I was going to put comments in the description. I was going to say stuff, but um, I guess I didn't. Let's see if this one works. There we go, and it's even more pinky, so maybe that makes more sense. Pink dots. So really, those pink dots are staying pink. We didn't actually get to change them, but I just cover the whole thing because it's easier. And if we were being very specific, it's easier to tell. Those little ones, that's what's covering it. It's going across. So the outside edge and that, that's how all of my patterns start. The outside edge is black. Then I lock in my layers. Oh, I forgot to color this one. And that's how I start my patterns because now I know that my two layers are locked together. If you crocheted this, you would have no design in the middle. And because we have all these empty dots, that my default would be it creates them then to be pink. Um, so you'd have one layer of pink and it would be locked together. You can see this is the same size chart, I think. I could count them, but this is the square that we just covered. And the line goes across, the line goes down, the line goes across here. So then we have to say, well, what are we going to draw today? And if you're familiar with pixels, for example, our cameras, you get an 8 milli millipixel or megapixel, I don't know the words. Uh, cameras, we, we've gotten bigger and better cameras, there's always more and more pixels. Our eyes, they say we can basically see at like 25,000 pixels or something like that. And those old video games, like an 8-bit Mario, where he's like one square for each leg, that's basically how much we've got here. It's more close to an 8-bit computer game than it is to your eyes. Which is why your, your image gets a bit pixelated. Um, I'm not really making a real pattern, but we could crochet it later. So usually what I'm going to decide is basically these white squares that don't have anything in them. What gets to put in them? You can go through and you can click on each square or fill it in. Usually on the computer, what I do is I try to draw something and then I fix it so that the dots are covering it. If you could cut this out or maybe you would print it on like a clear paper 
And then you could put it over a picture and you could see, well, it's using those pix pixels. That might be one way of doing it. Uh, on the computer, essentially, I take like a the computer version of a thick marker and I would color something here. And then I would say, oh, well, that dot is pink. So maybe if I adjust it, that would that would be the easiest way that I draw something. On a small one like this, we can do individual squares. We might say, well, I'm not going to draw exactly these hearts. We'll draw something different. But let's, let's add some little hearts in. We'll put a heart here in the corner. We'll say this one's going to be black. And this one's going to be black. And this one's going to be black. That gets us the V's for the hearts. Which means that this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. So you can see that this has created like a heart. The blue dots and my black filled in dots. And inside I could choose now, do I want it to be like a filled in heart? It's filled in-ish. But inside, these dots still have to be there because that's the interlocking mesh method. And my default, I could go in and color it, but my default is just that the white that I haven't colored in turns into pink. And that's how we get the design. You pick two colors. The dots don't change. You only get to fill in those white spots. So you can sort of see the design. It's very difficult on a chart with the scritchy scratchy, but hopefully the concept makes sense. And that's how, that's how interlocking crochet is done. Then when you go to read the chart, I'm sure I have other videos that maybe explain it better or possibly worse because some of my old videos are really poor. In order to decide then when you're crocheting it, you have to know how to read the chart, right? So our foundation row starts here. And we have one foundation row looking at the right side, counting each stitch. That's how many uh, stitches go on the bottom. So for example, this one, one, two, three, four, five, seven, nine, 11, 13, 15, 17, 19, 21. So yeah, this is a 20 by 20 square, uh, which means it's a 10 window. And that's usually what I call my tutorials. A 10 window square. This one, two, three down, and then one, two, three across, this makes one window, which is why you would count this as 10. So the chart is 21. It always has to be an odd number because you have dark on each side, and the windows are half of that. And then you need to read two rows at a time going each direction. So if you're familiar with crocheting interlocking crochet, you know that I have a big paragraph that tells you how to do the foundation rows. And then I start with row four. And I say, okay, row four, we're actually looking at the wrong side. You start with a chain three because that's on the outer edge. And you don't read this one, that pink, I colored it over, but it was originally a printed pink. You don't read that square at all. Right here, you've done your chain three, that counts as your double crochet and the chain space at the top. And then you're going to put another double crochet either in front or behind the pink one that's already there. So you're reading every other, you're only reading the stitches that we drew in. The printed ones, you don't read at all. So I can make another tutorial going over that a little bit more, but today I want to explain then how you would use this for mosaic crochet. Now, on here, we have some X's. Which direction are we facing? This way. So this is basically the heart. Um, well, it's almost the heart. The white um, is the same shape. However, I filled this in as well. So that would be white and this one would be white. But it's almost the same. When you're doing mosaic crochet, you start at the bottom and you count if there is the same color square, one, two, three, then that one gets an X. So this is a blue row, 
this would be a pink row, this would be a blue row. And you have to start here again and go one, two. This one starts as one, two, three. And that would be another X, which is why you can have an X every other row, but really you're counting three. The bottom is where your double crochet is going into. The top X is telling you when to make a double crochet. So this one, this chart, you can see it has these mesh dots. That is originally designed for interlocking crochet. Then I just went in and added X's so that you can do the mosaic crochet technique on it. If you wanted to start fresh to not have an interlocking version, essentially you could say, well, each row, if you do a single crochet in the back loop only, and you didn't do any drop downs, every other row, you'd start with your first color, your dark one, and then every other row would be switching, right? So essentially, if you colored this all the way across, you could have black stripes going up. Um, I could make the stripes if that makes it more, uh, if it, the explanation might make more sense. This is telling you what row you're doing. We could say that all of this was pink. If we were just doing single crochet in the back loop only, every other row would be straight. So that is different than when we started with the interlocking and its dots. You could just fill them in and make them straight. With interlocking crochet, you're deciding on those dots, whether that stitch is going behind or in front. Is the stitch getting shown or hidden? And the concept is the same for mosaic crochet. You have these stripes that would be single crochet in the back loop, single crochet in the back loop, single crochet in the back loop. If you did no drop down crochets, this is the base of a mosaic overlay mosaic crochet pattern. Inset is different. This one's overlay. You cut and join your yarn every row. All you're deciding for a mosaic pattern, at any point you could say, well, instead of doing a single crochet, I'm going to drop down and cover up that pink one. And at any point I can do that. This one, you only get to decide every other square. And on this one, you can actually do two squares beside each other. So that's the differences between the charts. With interlocking mesh, there's always that dotted mesh. With mosaic crochet, I can fill in those dots and I can have a few stitches in a row. I cannot, if this was my pink one, I can't drop it down here because it's already been taken care of. I can only drop it down if there's a pink one available to drop it down into, which pink doesn't cover up black very good when you're using a pen, but that would be covering it. So each technique, the same concept is deciding whether to hide or to show the stitches. You're either showing this pink one by dropping it down and then you're hiding that black behind, or your mesh dots your windows, you're either working behind the layer of mesh or in front of the layer. So it helps if you're familiar with the techniques, if crocheting them, then this makes more sense. When I do this kind of a pattern, I draw them for interlocking because I have those mesh dots on my computer already. And if I wanted to fill this in, for example here, this is a solid blue. I could fill these in. I could say, well, with interlocking, those dots have to be there. I don't have an option. But with mosaic, I can fill them in. And if I did fill them in, then I'd have to put X's here because those would all be drop down double crochets because we're covering up what's underneath. The computer program allows me to draw quicker, but the concept is the same on a grid. The computer program basically, if I was drawing for mosaic only, I tell myself which rows are going to be black and which rows are going to be pink. And then you have to decide where your drop down double crochets are going. With the interlocking crochet, I start with the dots, the mesh dots. And I say, okay, where am I pulling a, a stitch to the front? Where am I hiding a stitch? That's why you get these simple kind of boxy things. Because we haven't done any diagonal stitches on either of these. I have not introduced diagonal stitches because I find a lot of my customers 
are already feeling overwhelmed with this and they're not ready to go to the next level and I've been very busy doing other things so I was like well that's fine <laughs> we'll just leave it we don't need to add them but you can add those these this would be the basic foundation is it clear as mud sort of helpful do you want me to show you my computer I don't know if it'll visually show the computer very well but I could show um, it's just got different buttons <laughs> I don't know the the way you read the charts I have other videos but I could go over that better we could put X's here this is what we're saying that this would be a drop down crochet because this this would be your double crochet into the pink one below here's where you'd put a drop down double crochet um yeah we could crochet this although it's a very boring design it's very all of these white dots haven't been decided if you don't decide my default is to make them all pink other people would probably default to the other direction just personal preference we can try making um, letters like a very small letter that would be an A but it doesn't really look like an A on its own unless you make sure that all of these stitches are pink because if you if you try to make the next uh, letter if you were trying to draw if you were trying to draw the next letter you need to make sure there's a gap otherwise the outer line won't tell you where those stitches are and having a small enough letter like this this little gap here is really only a tiny window spot so the layers are um, puffy and your letter won't be very defined but some people want a very small letter so you can make a very tiny letter like that there's uh, obviously the bigger charts this one is 21 by 21 my biggest chart is 300 300 dots wide tall I don't know exactly the dimensions but that's going to be easier to make an image that's recognizable but it makes the blanket bigger if you're using worsted weight yarn obviously much much bigger if you're using a fingering weight yarn uh, then you can get those details in more stitches means longer to crochet the project uh, I haven't had any comments for a while so I hope that that is making sense um, we could I could explain how to read the charts better or I don't know the that's basically what I do uh, maybe I'll just show you my computer program because it's fun and that is also where drawing comes in handy so I think pretty much anyone would be able to make like this little heart it's not super complicated but when you get into my more complicated patterns like the tiger brothel tiger king for example it's quite large and that's how you can get those details I still am limited by those mesh dots even on a giant chart like that let's see if we can I will I might miss some comments because um, I was reading the comments on my computer let's go here we'll just put that down and my computer does open like so actually I think my computer goes all the way around I don't use this feature because I'm stuck in the past <laughs> that's really the I don't know how to use the features on pretty much anything I do that's as close as my camera will go let's see so here's the program that I use it's called WinStitch I guess I'll bring my computer up a bit that help oh there's a shiny light on there if I do it this way it's not great for viewing I'm not sure how to do screen sharing I could learn someday this is what I use it's called WinStitch and I would start with a new one I'm going to choose my design to be 
It always has to be an odd number. Oh, I need my keyboard. I can't do it like this. Open up. We'll just turn this. Is it gonna work? Oh, that ring light is pretty bright. If I turn it off, is it too dark? Um, well, you can see me in the reflection a bit. Let's do something smallish. For example, my tutorial one that we were doing on the small paper is 21. And I'll show you how I change it. So I'm going to do 21 by 21. And we'll make it, that's the size of the chart. Now I know you can't see it super great, but it's a grid. It's just making a grid just like we had on the paper. And I start with my pen and I have two colors here. One is black, one is purple. And I just draw a straight line. And the program is helpful because it allows me to mirror. Now I only have to draw less lines and it fills in the rest. And I always lock it in like that. That's how I did just on the paper. It's the same way. Default, this would be purple, but I usually don't bother filling it in unless I want to make sure that that is what I'm trying to do. And then I have these motifs. I've saved them. First, I went dot, 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 and I saved it. And now I can put these dots on my screen. And I can draw with my black one. I can say, well, I want to make an A. And you can see that it didn't quite get all of the grid the way it should. So I have to put those mesh dots back on top. And then I get my little pen marker and I say, okay, well, that one was supposed to be black. This one was supposed to be pink. And I edit it after I try to draw smoothly. And I say, well, that one should be all of these. And I always paste my little dots. If you get the dots in the wrong spot, it wrecks things. So I always make sure that the dots are lined up and I paste them like so. And that allows me to draw something. Now, before I can export, I have to only have two colors. So I just select all and I cut it and I fill it with pink and then I paste it back down. Oh, it didn't print. It didn't put my pink. Come on, pink. There we go. And then I put it back down. So now all the places that were white are pink. And then I have to change this so that there's only two. And I don't know if you're going to use Winstitch, but here's the, when you right click on the colors and you have to replace the active thread and you have to pick a color. So this one, I'm just going to pick that 316 soft white and 316 soft white. So now all of the white is white. And then these are actually E310 black is different than 310 black. So I have to do that for these ones as well. And apparently I'm picking 312. It doesn't actually matter which color I pick. As long as the numbers are the same, I go to palette. I remove all the duplicate threads. Now I have two colors in my palette and I can export interwoven slash lock and fillet. And it will give me the line counts. I'll just put it on desktop and it pops up. This is what it gives me now. That's how it's reading the chart. It is instructions, but it's not pretty enough for me. So I edit it and I create a pattern from those. So it's quicker because it counts it for me, but it's not, if you don't know how to draw, if you don't know how the computer program works, there's still skill involved. And if you had a bigger chart and you are deciding all these little pixels, it can take a long time. Um, I can show you one of my drafts. Which one? How about this one? So this is a draft that I've been working on. The chart, it tells me down here, the chart is 235 stitches by 293, not stitches, um, squares on a chart. 
the detail obviously you can get more detail but when you zoom in it's still dots um it's still one square by one square by one square and you get to decide where you're putting your dots and whenever i edit a pattern before i decide that it's good i go back and i put these little dots back on to make sure that i haven't when I look at it visually, I want to say, well, that's how I want it to look. But sometimes you draw somewhere where it actually a stitch doesn't belong. You can't put a stitch there, right? Because of those pre-printed dots that was on this one. So that's how I do it. And um, I don't know. I think that it's probably clear as mud because I'm, I don't know how to teach this part. <laughs> so I'm just, this is what I do. This is how I did it. And this one, he's not done because I don't like his claws here. But I have spent probably 60 hours on him already. Which feels like too much. And then I say, well, I should just quit. <laughs> but he'll come out someday. Someday I'll decide he's nice enough. And um, then you can crochet him. The written instructions, if you export... are much bigger. Oh, I don't have two colors. See, these ones, there's an, uh, I don't know if it is. Let's say remove. The bottom half, I thought it was the same, but it's not. It's removed that now. It won't do it unless you have two colors. So you have to actually know how the computer program works. But that is, that is how it works. This stuff I copy and paste to a Word document. I haven't missed any comments, have I? I was trying to keep an eye on it. And then I have these macros that I've created. And I run them and it changes things. And it took a long time to do them, but they save me a lot of time now. So that looks more like a pattern. Maybe you can see it. I don't know. So my macros change it to make headings and bolded. And it takes away the words and just puts a letter. And then I still have to have a key and a cover page. And I have gauge and all these other things. So it's, it's a process. Which I'm sure you all already knew. But hopefully now, if you wanted to create your own. Uh, yeah, uh, I did miss a comment. It says someone said it's helpful, which is great. And someone said their computer is down, so they'll have to replay later. That's good, too. And maybe we can do a design from beginning to end on a video. Well, that's sort of what we did here. This one, this little A is a very boring A in my opinion, but that is what I just drew. And I put the dots on and I removed them. You want to make a fancier design, takes longer. <laughs> My instructions here, I could put it on. It tells you, well, I didn't give it a title. Row one foundation, color A, 11 stitches plus chains. So that that's not necessarily how you would read a crochet pattern. But I know that it means I put 11 and 10 and I erase this first section even row three and I start at row four and I always have the same foundation instructions so I would just open a different pattern and I would save this as something else and then I use this again and I use this again I just change here where it says how many stitches and windows and then I just copy and paste my new pattern into here and that's how I'm able to make patterns quickly, because I'm doing a lot of copy and pasting. But you could crochet this, chain three, one back, seven front, one back, and you would get this little A. And the mesh dots, if you were doing mosaic crochet, you could fill them in. You could erase this black dot and you could fill it with white instead. Those are options. Uh, I actually uh, outsource the X's and I get someone else to do it. She has created an Excel program 
and different coding and whatever so that the X's happen automatically. That's how you can do these things faster. The computers do things for you. So that she just runs her macros just like I do and it puts the X's where they belong. And then she sends it back to me and I put it with the pattern and then it looks like an X chart. This one here, I was trying to do my heart levels from the center out. To create the center out, I still use Winstitch to give me the lines, but I have to do a lot more work on it um, to change it, which is why the center out double wedding rings is taking so long for me to get to. And yeah, so I don't know. I hope it is helpful. I hope it makes sort of sense. And I'm not planning on creating a program or teaching sessions on how to design because that's not my job. I would like to do my own art and I would like to create patterns and I can't add in becoming a business coach or anything like that. So one video, yes, I'll show you what I do. But if you have a lot of questions on how to do this, you might need to find someone else. This is what I'm trying to say. I don't really want to become a teacher telling you how to draw. So I have helped a few people and they, um, nobody ever says, hey, Ashley helped me, you know, they just go on and they go on with their lives and, and nobody gives me a second thought. So it's not really worth my effort. If I made a program to teach you how to do it, I'd have to charge money because that's, I make money on creating patterns. And if I'm not going to make money on creating patterns, I need to make money on teaching you. So I'm not willing to be a teacher for that right now. But maybe someday, if I get bored, maybe I can change that. So here I am. Hello! That's me. I think that's the end of my live video today. That's basically the process. That's what I do. Either graph paper, stitch fiddle, wind stitch. The concept is the same. You got to have those dots or you have to have the foundation stripes if you're doing mosaic. And I always just start with the dots and then I edit it for mosaic. That's how I do my patterns. The computer program lets me do it faster and easier. It counts them for me. And I do have videos on how to read the charts. It's a very old video, so perhaps it's not sufficient. I could go rewatch it and find out if I need to do that again. But my patterns all come with written instructions. So you don't really need to know how to read the charts, which is why it's not been a priority for me. And I do appreciate you watching my video commenting, liking. These are all good for me. They help me. Well, they mostly help my ego. <laughs> I, I feel special and important. And that's mm, a main thing that I like to feel. But I also hope that it helps you to feel more confident in your skills, try something new, and, you know, be creative. I don't, have, I don't care how you be creative. Everybody needs creative every day. I think so. We missed some comments. You're always helpful. You can only do what you can do. Thank you. Lindiana might be a combining names. Lindiana. Um, it's true. You have to know where your limits are and you have to say, well, I can't do that part. I'm not trying to like cut anybody out of the creative process. I'm not trying to be a doorkeeper or a gatekeeper or whatever that term is. I just don't have time to add that to my schedule. So this is my attempt at helping you. <laughs> if people want to create their own things. That's how you do it. And Kate says, thank you. Have a go go. Have a gojo says, thank you, Ashley waving to you from Scotland. That's pretty fun. I know you guys are all over the world and it's super exciting to me that I get to talk to people from everywhere and share my art and my skills and hopefully see what you come up with because there are other ways to create charts but I don't know how to do them. So I can't teach you that. But this is how I do it. And maybe it'll make sense to you. If it doesn't make sense to you and you really are stuck on, I want to create my own chart, try something else because this is not the only way to do things. It really isn't. So the Win Stitch program is, well, when I bought it, it was 60 bucks or something like that uh, for the premium. And I think you do need the premium to get that exported line stitch by count or whatever it's called stitch count from 
the lock and fillet they call it it's not in the free version or the lesser version or whatever it is that they have it so if that's your intention and you don't just want a cross stitching program you want that lock and fillet export you will need to have the upgraded one and i don't work for them i don't get a bonus or anything but that's that's something i learned at the beginning that you have to have that so um thank you from france Ooh, bonjour i only really know like j'aime le banan that's from grade two or something <laughs> here in canada French is our second national language and everyone is required to take a little French. I think I went to grade six, which was more than I was required to do. Probably I could read a few things like my shampoo bottle, but to actually pick the words from my brain and use a proper sentence, mm -mm, don't remember it. Better at Spanish, but that's because I lived in Mexico for three months with no English speakers around, just my roommate. So yeah, I have a lot of languages on tape because it's something that excites me and I really wish I learned more and I think languages are cool and countries are cool but right now my focus is crochet so that's it my arm's getting tired of holding this and I'm not putting it back in this silly little thing this is the silliest stand this is what it's got so bye guys I'm gonna go do computer work my kids are out of the house and it's quiet but I really am a little backed up on my computer stuff. I have a couple customs. I'm not ignoring you guys. I'm just a little bit swamped. So I'm going to get to work. Thank you for watching my video. I probably earned like two bucks from YouTube ads, which is crazy to me. And that's fun as well. Although I'm not going to support my family that well yet. Someday, maybe. And uh, thank you for being my friends, fans, customers, all of the above. Competition let's see if you guys can make some charts if you make a chart and you want to share the pattern I've had people ask in my Facebook group it's really not allowed my Facebook group is for Ashley Bratzel designs only I did allow like a Doctor Who thing once upon a time because it's free anyways if you want to share some charts maybe you can create your own Facebook group I will allow you to say hey I'm new and Maybe I'll have a post saying, hey, anybody who has a Facebook group will stick it there because I don't want to like micromanage my group. I really don't like that, but I do also want to keep it on topic. There are bigger groups that have broader focus. You can try there. That'll be good. Create your own stuff. I had to create my own stuff. You should create your own stuff, right? <laughs> so that is my whatevers. Bye, guys. Thanks for everything. You're the best. Adios. No, that's Spanish. I was going to do the French one. What's the French one for goodbye? Au revoir. Au revoir. I don't know how to end this. I was going to click on the computer. It's on my phone. It's on my phone. Okay, bye. <laughs>